Hello YouTube, I'm Pruitt, this is Jim Davis, and on today's Web DM, we're coming in the home stretch of the races races, and uh, it's getting to be a bit of a drag on our shooting schedule, so we're going to finish this intro and do a show on Dragonborn. Jim Davis, Dragonborn, why would you play one? Everybody loves dragons, everybody loves being able to hold your weapon. It's dragons with fingers, it's Dragonborn. Yeah, it's dra <laughs> dragons with opposable thumbs. What was born first, the dragon or the egg? Oh, wow. The cosmic serpent, the shedding of the scales creates the crystal spheres that hang in the firmament. The first dream that the cosmic serpent has creates the twin dragon spirits, Tiamat and Bahamut, which then split off creating chromatic dragons, and then that in turn seeds world life, and mm -hmm. eventually you get to dragonborn. I think dragonborn are one of those races in, in Dungeons and Dragons that, that are indicative of just the general, I don't know, the zeitgeistiness of fantasy moving away from like medieval Euro fantasy. Right. Right. And you can see it in the art. You can see it in a lot of stuff. Of course, third edition was all dungeon punked out. And I, I really like the art in, in fourth edition and it's sort of very thematic. And it seemed like they, they brought a unified style to a lot of um, the more uh, monstrous humanoid races. You could play tieflings, dragonborn, things like that. Yeah. So I, I think it's sort of indicative that, that players out there want more than just like knights in shining armor and princesses in towers and slaying dragons and things. They want to be the dragon. And that's what Dragonborn offer the player is a way to be like, do you want the majesty, the mystery, the the power that's associated with dragons, but... Um, PC sized. PC sized. Yes. Yeah. Like there's been other attempts at players playing dragons, right? Like there was the Council of Worms, um, second edition. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And even like the original D&D &D manual includes rules for characters playing dragons. In this case, Dragonborn sort of have their origins in third edition with the races of the dragon, but they really didn't come into their own, I guess, until uh, fourth edition mm -hmm. when they were offered as sort of a, a, a full-fledged, like, here's this uh, race that you can play uh, and make characters for. And then a fifth edition kind of follows along with this trend and, and offers both Dragonborn and Tieflings to a lesser, lesser extent as these sort of monstrous character races that you can play to fulfill those different archetypes and niches and offer players uh, the opportunity to play something other than an elf or a dwarf or something like that. Yeah, because everybody used to want to uh, play half dragons all the time. That and, seemed and take like that, it, take that was well, I forgot what the level adjustment for that was. It's like eight? Yeah, or something, something like that. ridiculous. <laughs> right. And it was just like, well, what if we just give them some scales and the breath weapon and... Uh, and I do think Dragonborn were an attempt to do that and, and a yeah. recognition that says like, yeah, a lot of people do want to play half dragons. They like the idea of a humanoid dragon, but the level adjustment from third edition, which for our viewers who, who aren't familiar with third edition, uh, level adjustment was virtual levels that you had to pay off. So if you had one level adjustment, then you didn't really start leveling up till you'd earned enough XP to get you to second level. And then yeah. you were always like one level behind everybody. Yeah. But like a uh, level adjustment of eight was pretty severe. And it's gonna be a long time before you get that second level if, if your DM even lets you do it in the first place. Right, everyone's <laughs> running around ninth level and you're- <laughs> Still an eight, it's still a first, first level, level character. character. Yeah, I can see why people would be like, no Dragonborn, no thank you. And particularly DMs who have a strong theme for their world or they wanna work with a particular genre of something, they're like, yeah, walking dragons, uh, no, 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 no thank you. Yeah. But I also am of the opinion that like d d works best the more crap you throw in it. The more you're just like, yeah, let's just bring it all in. Let's mix it all together until it's this giant fantasy stew yeah. that you've got just weird stuff mixing in. And, and maybe you don't need an entire nation of dragonborn that you've shoehorned into your world, but certainly there's room for a unique individual in the in the form of a dragonborn character that uh, that you can include. Going to the PHB, yeah, it describes dragonborn as you know honor bound, and right. they, they they live in their and they're they're all about their their groups, their clans, right? right? right. How do you envision that um, in in your D and D world? So in the kind of like baseline Dungeons and Dragons, it's like what you're saying, right? They're sort of a traditional warrior society, very proud, very. Uh, competitive with a, mm -hmm. with a fierce spirit. They also have, are strongly connected with the draconic gods, particularly Baphomet. Or sorry, um, yeah, that's the one I was thinking of. The demon Baphomet. Yeah. <laughs> 
the Platinum Dragon is what we will call him, uh, in order to avoid confusion on the uh, on your co-host's part. Yeah. In that respect, I, they leave me a little meh. The base sort of vanilla flavor of the Dragonborn is one of those where I'm, I read it and I'm just kind of like, nah. I, I mean, it works for some. I, I, I go with whatever the default is, if it's like Dragonlance or Forgotten Realms or something, which is kind of a good time to say that there were kind of humanoid dragons in Dragonlance, but bit. they were distinctly enemies. They were sort of like Takasis, the Tiamat of the world, has stolen the metallic dragon's eggs, she corrupts them, perverts them, out, outstep these humanoid draconic figures uh, with the scales of metallic dragons, yeah. but allied with the, the chromatic dragons, and they all did something nasty. Yeah, whenever the, they die. The Draconians? Like, right, the Draconians. So they either turn to stone, trapping your weapon mm -hmm. in there with them, or they exploded or turned to a gas or yeah. something. They're kind of nasty monsters for low-level parties to have to deal with. Yeah, those hand grenade enemies. You gotta love it. <laughs> you really gotta love it. So <laughs> that that's kind of an antecedent, uh, but not so much as, a, as the half-dragon to Dragonborn. But if someone was like, I, I like the player's handbook, flavor for the dun for the dragonborn. I'm not going to say no to that. Mm -hmm. But I might say in a, in one of my homebrew worlds like it's just you or a small group of your dragonborn. There's not like a whole nation of them out there that that are exactly like your character. Um, in this case, you know, you're you are unique, you're just yourself. Um, or you come from a small community or a city state even something like that. I I'm one of those people where it's like I'll let a player create up to a city state if they yeah. want. <laughs> but but above that, I, I'm, I that's DM reserved territory. Yeah, yeah. I like them thematically. I love the idea of playing a dragon. I love the idea of playing a dragon born and and tapping into the majesty and awe of a draconic character. I'm just kind of lukewarm on the base uh, yeah. lore that they have for themselves in the PHB. We talked about him before. Uh, I I I played Praetor. A, yeah. a dragonborn sorcerer of it was the predator, and mm -hmm. that's how I had their 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 back. Like their their whole thing was all about hunting and being part of the natural world. And you know when you were a youngling, um, mm -hmm. uh, whatever you, they called them, you know they a would whelp. like yeah they the whelp they would take him, blindfold him, take him into the jungle, mm -hmm. and you're like you have to find your way home and just mm -hmm. drop them off, and they have to come home with like a trophy and survive the jungle, and that Correct. was how you were made into the into the clan to make mm. sure that you were worth something worth because something, yeah. it's all about the the strength of the clan so right you know i don't know i try i tried to, to spruce it up a little bit i've played two dragonborn so far in, in in fifth edition and one of them i don't i don't think i thought about his background he was more about the character of himself he was a a fiendish warlock um red red dragonborn um his whole deal was that he thought his axe was possessed by the spirit of his dead mother, but it wasn't. It was a devil leading him astray. And, and so I, I didn't get to play the character uh, that much, but I enjoyed uh, a strength-based warlock uh, in that mm. respect. Really fun. Uh, and then the other one was for a one-shot uh, Grant Ellis's Black Sands campaign, and I played a, a, a dragon who was cursed to humanoid form. I, I like that kind of background for Dragonborn, and I could e I could easily see uh, having a whole group or community of Dragonborn consisting of dragons who are cursed to humanoid form, mm -hmm. and they band together because they realize, like, yeah, we can't be solitary individual sort of loners anymore like we used to. Uh, our power is such diminished that we have to stick together. And now you've got a bunch of solitary creatures who are forced by their cursed circumstance to learn to live in a society mm -hmm. together. And I, I think that could be pretty interesting. Uh, oh. like a city of cursed dragons. A city of cursed dragons, <laughs> all of them with their own individual hordes. You're looking at, like, like Wakanda in the middle of what I mean, like, right, you, like yeah. these are rich motherfuckers, and they're all coming together mm. to protect what they have. Protect what they have, probably very secret. They don't want others to know about their condition uh -huh. or status. That, the character and, that I made was kind of like that, and, very and also they're they're looking away to uh, looking for a way to remove the curse. Uh huh. So uh -huh. it could be an interest. Uh, hell, that could be a whole campaign. That could be a whole campaign. A whole party, like they're the first party of outsiders they're allowing in because they've shown their prowess, and maybe right. they can help. Or it's a 13th warrior kind of thing. Like, it has to be someone from someone outside from the clan. Outside, yeah. I went with one of just, like, my character was like, I accept my fallen condition and am seeking the most power this fragile vessel can hold. Yeah. Uh, in, in which case, that's 20 levels of spellcasting. Um, but, I, like, there's others that you can think of. I, I really like, there's a blog out there that I like, in, uh, that I like reading called Tales of the Grotesque and Dungeonesque. Mm. And it's uh, a fifth edition oriented Dungeons and Dragons blog uh, where a guy's got a couple of uh, homebrew settings that he's created. One of them inspired by Bloodborne, 
which Ooh. is really kind of cool. And uh, in this one, dragons are manifestations of sin, right? Oh. So a dragon is created when a community is is engaged in excessive greed, or a, a, si a location or site of excessive violence or wrath might spawn a red dragon that then grows in in terrible power until it's too much to deal with. So a dragon born is the the manifestation of an individual sin as a physical corruption. Mm. So uh, you know someone who's a red dragon born maybe started life as a human, but through greed and avarice and, and deceit starts to grow scales ridges along their back, claws, mm. until they wake up one day and their inner corruption has manifested as an outer monstrous appearance. Oh. And so every dragonborn is, is different and unique in that respect. And I, I like that one because, first off, I love anything that turns a CR0 peasant into a monster. Well, I just yeah. do. And I like the story implications for it because you can have a, a, an adventure that deals with sort of some secret shame that a community is trying to cover up and one of their members has become monstrous. The players then have to deal with that. Do they take compassion on this individual and say, mm -hmm. hey, you're in a real bad place and while you might have done something horrific and might be responsible for many atrocities, what happened to you was an atrocity itself. Yeah. yeah. Do we try to make amends or does the party just go, yeah, you're too... It's, you're, it's too much. You gotta go. Uh, yeah. Kind I of mean, force those decisions on the the party with a monster like that. Yeah, when you have the local artist uh, turned into a dragonborn because he keeps doing all of his paintings uh, portrait instead of landscape, you know? I mean, that is that really worth it? That deception is not enough. Yeah. Is, is it worth it? I don't, I really can't answer that question. Somebody else is gonna, someone more qualified is gonna have to. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but there's like others, right? Like we were at Cursed Dragons, we've got sort of like Manifestation of Sin. What if it's like dragonborn sit at the apex of all the reptiloid races, lizard folk, kobolds, troglodytes, yonti, hell even tortles, yeah. right? Like there's all of these reptile humanoids yeah. that are in a Dungeons and Dragons world. And what if you took like all the weird lizard people references mm -hmm. that like Alex Jones and shit, like they oh, peddle, yeah. oh, and you're yeah. like, those are all true for my D&D world. <laughs> yeah, the lizard people are ruling from behind the scenes. They are ruling, they are shapeshifters. Uh, this is why I like Tiamat and, and particularly drawing Tiamat, like her, her, her uh, Sumerian and, and sort of Mesopotamian roots like trying to figure out what it is what if Tiamat isn't evil what if Tiamat's just angry that all these mammals keep waking her up mm. and, and, it's, and so she creates monsters and, and fills the world with horrors because yeah. it's full of these chattering little furry things that just like keep bothering her and she's like yeah. I'm gonna send my children after you so I can get some sleep yeah, they just keep playing their music and running their drills. <laughs> running and, their drills and practicing you know. with their guitars. Yeah. What if the Dragonborn sit at the apex of, of, a, of, of a reptiloid like civil... A legion of doom? Right, a fallen <laughs> civilization of reptiloids that, that at one point controlled the world. That concept that the Yonti sort of created sorcery and at one point mm -hmm. were sort of the pinnacle civilization that's now fallen, extend yeah. that to all the reptiloids and they fit in an elaborate hierarchy with Dragonborn at the top. Yeah, a little bit of that, like, uh, what is it, the Silurian? from Doctor Who. Uh-huh, a little yeah. bit of the Silurians, yeah. Hiding and, wait, and waiting for their time to rise. Yeah, they have a reptile's mentality, and individually they might not live that long, but collectively they have mm -hmm. long memories. Yes. And remember yeah. what it was like they'll have, before. Yeah, they'll have a plan to uh, warm the planet to get rid of all the mammalians. Uh-huh, yeah, get rid so of them Just so that they all. can come back out with their cold-blooded nature and be just fine. Absolutely, uh -huh. absolutely. Maybe Alex Jones was right. Oh my God, I fucking hope not. <laughs> 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 and then the other thing is like different colors. What if you've got purple dragons? What if you've got yellow? What if you don't have dragons where their scale color corresponds with a cosmic alignment? Yeah. And you instead just have fierce, terrible, amazing dragons. Yeah. And that kind of like dovetails into what is the relationship between a dragonborn and its similar dragon draconic type? Is there a stigma to being a red dragonborn that comes from the fact that red dragons are known to be wrathful creatures, yeah. burning the countryside, taking loot, taking hostages? Does any of that rub off on red dragonborn? Do only red do only red dragonborn come from red dragon eggs that are blessed by the draconic gods to create these things in the baseline? lore right like those are questions that a dm's gonna have to answer uh is it one of those things where it's random 
Mm -hmm. And a dragonborn, who knows? It could be that two, a silver and a gold dragonborn create a green or something. And, and maybe next time it's like a copper. Well, that's when you'd have a blue and a red dragonborn get together and make that purple dragon. Make that purple dragonborn. Well, see, then you'd have that pur pur purple dragonborn become a knight and you have a purple dragon knight. Purple dragonborn dragon knight. Yeah, yeah. we could do that. Mm -hmm. I could work with that kind of character. That's for you, Crump. And then just leads into larger questions of what is the relationship between dragons and dragonborn in your campaign? Right. Do you... Are, are the dragonborn sort of the servant, the humanoid servants of these dragons? Is there animosity between them? Is it that the dragonborn see themselves maybe as a, a different evolutionary path yeah. for what dragons could be? Um, you know, some D and D worlds have a, a history that long and 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 feature those sort of like scientific principles being brought in and, and existing co you know, next to magic. Yeah, yeah. And so it could be that maybe at one time there were small runty things that would have been called dragons, but over the millennia they have evolved into a form uh, not unlike the mammals that they co-evolved next to mm -hmm. uh, into sort of a humanoid form with digits and limbs. And those are things to ask yourself. Like, you want a strong le link between the dragons and the dragonborn. Do you want there to be separation? Is it a situation where everybody in the world just assumes dragonborn are dragons? And right. who knows where real dragons were if, if they ever existed at all? And uh, I think you've mentioned this before. It's like, could, did they come from dragons shape-shifted in human form and going amongst the, the humanoid races and coupling. And yeah, yeah. Eventually, you get down to Dragonborn. I eventually, mean, you get down to Dragonborn. Maybe they shape-shifted in order to go into hiding and, and lost their and form. Forgot. They forgot. And now they're just in stuck in this form, sort of a variation of, of the cursed dragons. Mm -hmm. uh, those are some of the story, thematic elements of what make Dragonborn interesting. Right, right. Looking at the classes, though, we get some interesting stuff as well. Yeah, yeah. So, like, moving on to builds, yeah. you know, we usually do this. Like, so when you're playing, like, appropriate to Dragonborn type. Like, yeah, you're, going, like, you're leaning into the archetype. Lean into it, yeah. you know. So these are obviously, you know, you get that charisma bonus, and that's, mm -hmm. that's a big deal. So... You're probably going to see what? A lot of paladins, a lot I of mean, sorcerers. They really lend themselves well to paladins. The strength and charisma bonus is, it seems custom made to, to oh, yeah. have a paladin. Yeah. And you can easily see a, a, a dragonborn paladin as, as leaning, it, leaning heavily into we serve the platinum dragon or the five headed uh, dragon or whoever, whatever you call them in your campaign world. The draconic gods sort of, uh, they uphold them. They, uh, they, they uphold those ideals, they, they live by them and, and try to embody them in everything. Mm -hmm. And you can have a, a sort of character that's holy and virtuous and pious, but they're, they're doing that because it makes them excellent, not because they care to impose that on someone else like say a human paladin might or something like that. And obviously just in terms of, of the mechanical synergy, the that race class combo is great. There's a there's a strong part of me that really wants to be like a gold or silver uh, dragonborn, go like devotion paladin up to six for the for the aura, and then the rest of it in divine soul sorcerer. And just like, yeah, my guy that's fourteen, that gets you the wings, right? Like mm -hmm. from uh, divine so you're just like, yes, I am I am the Platinum Dragon Reborn kind of situation. <laughs> yeah, because I mean, because you got those sorcerer slots with sorcerer and cleric spells, and yeah. you got a smattering of paladin spells and um, all that funneling into those uh, those, those the smites. smites. Yeah. I mean, and that's not to mention uh, the meta magic that you're going to be able to throw in on top of that. <laughs> right. Trust me, I played a melee sorcerer. It's not. It's it's, it's not. When you throw a twin bad. spell on yeah. those cantrips. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yes, yes, I'll take some more of that. I'll take some more of that. That's uh, one way to go. Obviously, you just go pure sorcerer with your dragonborn and, you know, just take the strength and say, oh, nice benefit. But you're mostly there for the charisma. Mm -hmm. And and I think that that's another strong uh, archetype that you can lean into, the sort of dragonborn sorcerer. That was what my character was. It was a, actually, I, I combined the two and I said, my character is a shadow sorcerer. I was a red dragonborn, and I was like, screw that, they are a shadow dragonborn. Right. And, and, and it represented, to me, a merging of their race and their class into one coherent thing. Mm -hmm. I, I hope I get to return to that character at some point, because I really liked him. 
Um, <laughs> really, it was really sort of one of the, I was like, oh yeah, I, I could do this. Yeah. Uh, and and so, I, and I think maybe to a lesser extent, Warlock uh, could lend itself well. Like I said, I made a, a, a fiendish Warlock for a Dragonborn, and I, I like the combination of strength and charisma. Mm -hmm. it, was the, it was the Warlock build that, that uh, did a lot of reflexive damage, you know, like Armor of Agathis, Hellish Rebuke, eventually would have used Fire Shield to make it uh, such that's like, yeah, you can hit me. You don't really want But to. it's going to hurt you, and then I'm just going to smack you whenever it's my turn. Mm -hmm. um, I had a lot of fun with that uh, that kind of class. But yeah. So are, are there are, any that uh, that you can think of? Well, I mean, I'm just thinking about Warlock. Uh, if you came up with a, some kind of draconic patron, I mean, yeah. you're our dragonborn, right? So you find an ancient dragon, or you have this ancient dragon calling to you from deep inside the mountain. Yeah. yeah. And whether you not whether or not you meet them, who knows? Who knows? Uh, it'd probably look pretty similar to the uh, the fiendish pack. Maybe you, oh, you, yeah, you yeah. change some of the abilities slightly depending on the the dragon type and yeah. you know, bonus spells and all that. I can see it being something like a Shardalon is one of those iconic red dragons, or uh, what's the one from Storm King's Thunder? Um, starts with a K. I forget his name. Old Scar or Big Scar or something like that. Mm -hmm. Is the one that has w a wands in his wingtips. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, or or uh, Imrith is another one from Storm King's Thunder. This uh -huh. uh, this this blue dragon that deals with like creating golems and gargoyles and things. So like those are the kinds of dragons that might have enough power that a dragonborn could come to them and say, "Yes, I will grant you a portion of this in exchange for mm -hmm. services and, and whatnot." Yeah, yeah, and uh, I or or. Um you could have the combination of creating a dragonborn and the warlock at the same time if you tweak the story of Dragonheart. Yeah. Where you have somebody come along and this dragon gives like half, like a, a piece, piece of, of its, its heart, heart. Which transforms the, the, the bearer person. Yeah, into a dragonborn. And they might be a little pissed off about that. Yeah, and they might not, maybe, maybe they lost their family or something because of it. But they're bound to this patron now and yeah. they can't, literally can't live without them. Right. So you can't really just put your thumb in their eye. Yeah, and I like that one because it, mean, it, it kind of like takes that warlock patron of, there's a difference between a warlock and a patron and a cleric and their deity. Yeah. And, and there's a, a bit of codependency and abuse implied in the warlock patron. It doesn't have to be. Yeah. But you can you can kind of draw upon that and go like, yeah, this is not a good situation. They, this person's loved ones will want to get them out of this relationship with the patron. Exactly. If assuming they've survived some sort of conflict or something. Yeah, and it, and if we have fans out there that still haven't read the Dresden Files or yeah. listened to the audiobooks, Harry Dresden's response or a relationship with a with with Mab the Queen of Air uh -huh. is a perfect it's, relationship between like a warlock and I mean patron. it's just like I need some power and she's like oh you're gonna be my bitch yeah um, basically but you know it's, he gets his own he, he gets, gets, he, he gets his thing. licks in he, he gets he, his licks in it's also <laughs> it's also for players you need to read it so you know how to fuck with your patron a little bit right and get away with it right so without this become morphing into a warlock episode which we're we'll have uh, hopefully shortly for you uh, sometime soon who knows <laughs> who knows though the way that these things work those are some of the archetypes that are, i think lend themselves well for yeah. dragonborn they lean into the mechanics of it and the themes that are found in dragonborn so we don't have to just stop there no no, no 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 that's that we don't we're not here for just character optimization we're not. Let's let's throw some some fun RP into it and play against type a little bit, just so you can you can have a cool character. Yeah. So I think like still keeping in with like mechanical, they're mechanically aligned with each other, but maybe thematically they're against type. Something like a barbarian dragonborn. Uh, we had one in uh, our our Wrath of Tiamat game. Uh, yeah, blue, blue bonnet. Blue bonnet. The blue uh, dragonborn <laughs> uh, barbarian. And uh, she was one of the two uh, main tanks for the party and was just an absolute beast. Into the campaign, I believe, riding on the back of a brass dragon, fighting a giant shadow dragon. It was pretty sweet, actually. She's using the draconic rage and anger and fury to, as represented by the barbarian rage and fury. But, like, taking it a step further, if dragons are, say... A fallen species, and their current manifestation is uh, is is dragonborn. Yeah. That having them all be barbarians or a barbarian type civilization reinforces that sort of like, yeah, they used to be the pinnacle. Yeah. But now they they're nomadic raiders, and and they never recovered from whatever it was that brought them low. Uh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, uh, uh, what was that from uh, from like second to third edition? The the whatever 
play Ooh. that made the dragons dumb. What am, what am I? Um, I know that there's the Draco rage the Draco and the Draco. Rage. Then there's like a Drake. Uh, there's like a Mythol in Forgotten Realms, where it's like the high elf magic that like is super powerful that did something like that, turned them into mindless beasts. Mindless beasts, but yeah. like that same angle, except turn them into dragonborn. Right, so they can be dealt with. So they can uh, be dealt with, yeah. and then they just lost their fucking minds, and now you have these <laughs> the Mongol Mongols, yeah, raiding people up and down, you know, the Sword Coast or whatever, yeah. wherever your world is. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's come on, come that, on, that scared the shit out of you. I think another against type thematically, but still aligned mechanically, would be Bard, right? Like you still got charisma, and even you could do like Valor or Swords, yeah, and you're be not just fine. You're just fine, but I think it's like it doesn't. It's not quite in the same vein. A martial dragonborn is you like a paladin or maybe even a fighter or something like that. Um, but having him be a bard uh, that was one of the more martial, uh, you know, martial bards would be an interesting take on that. Mm -hmm. I think having him just be any type of bard would be interesting. Yeah, reciting epic poetry or something like right, that. Right, the sagas of the ancient dragons. Again, go to Deep Space Nine with Worf, mm -hmm. and where he really starts getting into all the Klingon operas. Right, right. Like I can see like a dragonborn paladin like belting out these <laughs> deep basso like epic like like in the draconic language. Uh -huh. I don't know. I, I I think that's that's fucking awesome. One of the things that I like about Dragonborn is their exoticness, mm -hmm. right? And and I like I like pairing uh, a Dragonborn with the far traveler background. Yeah. And and it's like they're not from around here. <laughs> literally. <laughs> they're literally not. And so having one that's also a bard is sort of like they are bringing those tales from those far off places and showing these sort of like dirt farmer <laughs> peasants at the at the local inn what you know this different style of music, this different style of storytelling. I think there's a lot of uh, rich possibilities for a dragonborn bard. Yeah, yeah. Um, and hell, maybe they maybe they like. Like play the spoons on their scales, or like pl pluck their tines. <laughs> right. It makes like weird, you know, like a, it's almost like a like xylophone. Bells just like, and frills, yeah, you know, stuff like that. Uh, you know, hey, yeah. go, have fun with it. The idea of like a a, a dragonborn like rogue, yeah, like a black dragonborn rogue that like spits dribbling, acid. dribbling acid in a lock in a to lock. help yeah, dissolve I mean, it. Yeah, I mean that to me that's, that's fucking awesome. Right, I mean, it does it look mechanically. Strength and charisma don't really help yeah, you. They're not really helping you. Uh, it, it would be difficult to build something like that if you were doing point by, just yeah. to make sure that you've got the stat support for the concept that you're going for. But just to me, like the theme of it is awesome. Like this is a theme. He strips down off all of it because he's got the black scales. He's like taking the hood off, taking off things. It's like he's already he's already kind of camouflaged for the shadows mm -hmm. uh, naturally and like dribbling acid into locks or eating away at bars or something like that you can't keep him anywhere cuz it's like he's going to get out and to dissolve his way out of there yeah eventually uh, eventually he'll, he'll eventually get, he'll get out of there um, <laughs> so that's the kind of thing I, I i know it's difficult in 5th edition to sometimes make those off type characters particularly if you're using point by but i also think like it's it's really worth it if you can, to play against type um, just because of the, the, the possibilities for creating a more memorable character are, uh, I don't know, I just like it. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, any there's our favorite dragons, Dragonborn. Dragonborn. Yeah. There yeah. we go. Yeah. It's Dragonborn show. Crack, crack that egg. WebDM on Twitch, Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Central, beginning March 20th, as Pruitt sails the cosmos in Starward Bound. And Thursdays at 7 p.m. Central, beginning March 22nd, as Jim treks through the desolate and deadly land between two rivers. Check out twitch.tv slash WebDM for more. You've watched us talk about it. Now it's time to show you how we do it.